Juliana, Fox for Golf, Yankee Mike Shares, ready for the drop. Fox for Golf, Yankee Mike Sierra. Power Roger, your discretion, report leaving 3,000 feet. Report leaving 3,000 feet, Mike Shares. Point five. Okay. Good morning from sunny St. Martin. It's 9 o'clock and I thought it'd be nice to take you guys along on a day in the life of a Caribbean skydive pilot. As you can hear, uh, the pool is right next to the runway. Um, perfect to start the day off with the noise of a loud ATR. So that's my alarm clock. Can't slip through it, but uh, perfect view. Refueling uh, the skydive plane uh, this morning. Um, in an hour, so 10:30. Perfect. Could you do 40:40? Uh, Perfect. I'll see you then. Bye bye. Got that sorted. Now uh, time for some breakfast. Before the start of every workday, I go through a short to-do list. This includes calling up the fuel guy, checking the weather, and checking the no times. And that's what I like to do during breakfast. I check the TAF and METAR from both Princess Juliana and CJ Lloyd. These two airports are also my alternates in event of a diversion, so I make sure I also have a look at their no times too. For both weather and no time, I download a PDF from the website and send it to my boss for bookkeeping. I also like using this site called Windy as it has this really cool function that allows you to see the wind direction and speed at different altitudes over at the drop zone. It's 10.05, time to go, got my work clothes on and we're gonna take the car to the airport. So a lot of people ask me how I got this job and it's kind of a funny story. Um, the skydive season in the Netherlands ends around November. The weather gets worse and uh, there's less flights. So I thought I'm not gonna spend the whole winter doing nothing. <laughs> at least I wanted to fly and I was looking at different places in Europe and they weren't really hiring for such a short period of time. And then my dad said, with your EASA license, you can basically just work in all the European countries, but that also means the Caribbean. So I did some Googling and I found a drop zone here in St. Martin, one in Bonaire and one in uh, Guadeloupe. I sent a bunch of emails like, hey, are you guys looking for a pilot? Had no idea if they were actually looking for anyone. And uh, got some replies in uh, Bonaire, they didn't need anybody in Guadeloupe. They were really excited. But then when they saw my resume and they saw that I wasn't speaking French, they're like, that's no, why you can't come. Um, which now, after our trip to Guadeloupe, I figured out they do all their <laughs> their radio work in French, which would have been a challenge. So um, after looking up the drop zone here, Skydive SXM, I found their Facebook page, sent the, them a Facebook message, actually, asking if they were looking for a pilot. And they said, yeah, we are. Um, how many hours do you have? Do you have a dropping experience and uh, are you available from November until April? And then I was like, hell yeah, of course. So um, sent them my resume. They were excited about um, that I wanted to come. They never had a female pilot before. And uh, then I was going to come in November, but um, their pilot wanted to stay a little bit longer. So it ended up being end of January. And now I've been here for three weeks and it's so much fun doing a lot of flying, adventuring around the island, seeing all the beaches. I mean, there's 30, 32, 36, I don't know, 30 plus beaches here that I can go and adventure to. Um, went to Guadalupe for maintenance, which is a lot of fun. And uh, it's, it's super cool to just be here in a country where I can fly on my European license without having to get a, um, a visa. That's another thing. I mean, as you know, I've done a lot of flying in South Africa. But getting a job there, um, I first of all, I don't have a ICAO 
commercial license and getting a visa to work there is not that easy. Um, so this was a really, really good option and for anyone who's looking for work in the off seasons of Europe, I would advise to come and work here. Oh. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> so when we enter the airside, we gotta show our uh, passport and license. Now the gate opens. I conveniently put the keys of the plane all the way in the bottom of my bag. <laughs> Score. <laughs> Take the pins out. So when we take this door out, we need to make sure to put in the wind deflector, um, just to make sure that if the cargo door is open in flight, especially with the high speed descent, that we don't get a really massive inflow into the back of the cargo compartment, uh, which could blow off the tail. Not so safe, so we can't forget that. almost at nine perfect if we put any more than nine quarts in she just spits it all out um, so no need for extra oil uh, that's good to see time but it's just because we we had to use it as a passenger plane for a few days otherwise it would be a pain to do this every time nice and duct taped this one and we have to take the second yoke out we can't forget that this is actually really quite simple. A few screws right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's three screws. Boom! <laughs> it's out. So I kept the um, the gust lock in so that it doesn't shoot back. Put on the battery for a second. Watch your head. And not to forget the music works. <laughs> some wrong miscalculation.
I am always a strong believer of doing a really good pre-flight, especially in places like this. It is windy. Um, there's other plays around, people walking past. We put in a gust lock, but you never know with the winds here. So do your pre-flight correctly. <laughs> So we checked weather, no time, uh, fixed the plane, did the pre-flight. Uh, all we gotta do is file the flight plan. So I have a number in Guadalupe that I call. Um, so let's see if they are willing to help. Hi, good day. This is Rosita Smink from Skydive SXM. The registration is Fox Drop Golf Yankee Mike Sierra. One, two. passengers now and I'm um, gonna put on my parachute very important I'll do on my uh, electronic display is set it on the oil temperature just so I can see if that's rising before I do my run-ups. Now let's put on the rest of the avionics. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my mixture back a little bit. Uh, I'm waiting on the passengers, don't want to get those spark plugs all dirty. Oil temperature's looking good, I'm gonna set that mixture full rich again. And bring my RPM to 1,800. Brakes are holding. Temperatures, pressures are looking good. Let's check those magnetos. Okay, left looks good. Right. Drop is less than 100 RPM. I got that variable pitch. I pull back that propeller pitch three times, you hear the engine. Production is in the green. All my instruments are looking good. Let's bring uh, this throttle back to idle. No cutout, perfect. Back to 1000 RPM. Here they come. Once they're seated, I'll uh, do my radio call and then we are ready to go to uh, the holding point. Grand Kaz, good morning. Fox Rock Golf, thank you, Mike Shira. Mike Shira, good morning. Mike Shira is on the apron, taxiing to Holding Point Alpha, three PUB, two jumpers. We have a one canopy and two hours endurance. Two nets, one zero one nine, one hundred degrees, ten knots, temperature two eight one zero one. Two no traffic reported. Report ready. Roger, QNH one zero one nine, runway one two, no traffic reported. We'll report ready. Holding Point Alpha, Mike Shira. <laughs> Um, I see, uh, you have time for a quick one. Copied, entering band tracking runway 1-2. Have you got a squawk for me? Squawk in contact with Juliana. Squawk in contact with Juliana, my share. Thank you, Mike Shira. 2,500 feet and overhead to Samar. Changing frequency for Juliana. 18.7. 18.7, <laughs> <laughs> Juliana, good morning. Uh, Fox Rock Golf, thank you, Mike Shira. Fox Rock thank you, Mike Shira. Juliana. Fox Golf, thank you, Mike Shira. 2,800 feet overhead to Samar. Climbing flight level 105, squawk 2000. Thank you, Mike Shira. Advisory to jump, ultimate 3012. 3012, we'll report ready for the jump, Mike Shara. Grand Paz, Fox for Golf, thank you, Mike Shara. Two minutes for the drop. 
Okay, see you. Copy traffic going up. Move on to taking our caravan. Roger, uh, we'll report ready for the job. My chair. Juliana, Fox or Gulf, thank you, Mike Sierra, ready for the drop. I have the caravan visual. Thank you, Mike Sierra, General Roger, report entering Grand Cast Circuit. We'll report entering Grand Cast Circuit, Mike Sierra. One minute. We have come to Fox Sierra, Fox Sierra. All right, I'm on jump run at point two, I'll let him know. I have that mixture set rich again. Point two. Oh, we're going to bring that photo back. Bye -bye. Fox call, thank you, my share. Drop complete, descending. Okay, H1019, 0 0 knots, going to report. report left down, we're going to next one, share. I got my power settings minimum green. Gonna watch that cooling. I'm gonna bring that speed to 135 knots. Uh, now we're on 3,000 feet a minute descent. Gotta watch out for that traffic out here. Just gonna continue this spiral uh, descent a little northeast of Tintamar. Must be 16, 117, Coming in hot in the circuit, I'm uh, 3,000 feet, so I'm about 135 knots going, there's no traffic here, so uh, coming in hot. Oh, and I can see the traffic departing, so I'm going to go on to a left base, Fox Golf Yankee Mike Chair, left base runway 1-2. Final next, Mike Chair. Fox Golf, thank you, Mike Chair. Turning final runway one two. Zero nine zero fourteen knots. Report vacated. Report vacated, Mike Chair. Pull forward and look at that thirty degree flaps. Come in nice and slow. One five. Over. Call thank you, my share. Runway vacated. Right, sir. That was it for today. Let's uh, set this RPM back to 1,000. And that's a wrap. End of a really successful flying day. We're gonna pack up here, put the doors back in, and the pajama back on, and uh, then it's time to go see a sunset.